Hello everyone, my name is Anton and in this video I want to get into some of the updates of our favorite note-taking PKM visual note-taking apps that are out there today and let's start with Obsidian first. So we have our a new Obsidian Insider release this week which is 1.7.2. There's no shiny new things that are included in here but there are, are some enhancements and bug fixes and things like that to the application. Um, you can now filter through your Obsidian Sync if you're using that. And some things have been made to, to be faster uh, with the application. I'll make sure I leave a link to all of the release updates so that you can go through the details. So if you want to get a full read on what these releases are, there will be a link in the description below. Next application is Capacities. So right now we have a new release and the biggest release on in this particular update is the availability of the tablet applications to the believers. So the tablet app it has been kind of a long awaited thing for me to get access to. They've had the, the mobile app for your phone on iOS and Android. Now you can actually leverage their tablet app on the iPad OS and on Android OS. Now, I will say I have a video that goes into the Capacities tablet application. So if you want to get a little bit more information on what has been released for that tablet application, go ahead and take a look at that video. They have done some other updates and let's actually go to their update page here where we can see front and center they have the tablet app which again is in beta for the believers here who get early access to this and they give a few screenshots on things you can work through on here uh, just a spoiler alert on the on the video that I've done if you're going to go and watch that one thing I've noticed that's missing from the application here that you get on the desktop and you get on the web is that map and I did not see it included on the uh, on the tablet version of the application so that may be something that you'll you'll be missing in this initial release and also they've introduced um, a sidebar with uh, certain buttons so you do not get that left hand pane like you typically do on your desktop and in the web applications but go and take a look at the video to get a full kind of uh, in-depth look at the application itself they go through here that they've done some updates to the media layer and to help with um, offline support some caching some uh, queue based task here for again enhancing and optimizing some of the offline capabilities they still don't have the full offline capability yet but they are working on that so I look forward uh, to when they get the, the full level of um, offline capability that I'm typically used to for an offline first application like Obsidian there's been some updates to the AI properties where you can now autofill dates, numbers, and collections. And queries and collections now, um, you now have backlinks for those. So as I mentioned, I will have links to the details in the description of the video here. The next updated application here is a Fiend.pro. Right now they're at release 0.17.0 and there have been some big updates in this application as well let's go and take a look at the release page for this application and we can see that there's been some enhancements for the uh, frames and groups on the edgeless boards the uh, some additional page information here is, is there you have now have block references that you can uh, utilize within the app Lattice support is there. Sharing and duplicating enhancements are available. And you can also now uh, do an extensive amount of customization to the app and setting up your, your defaults within the app. And that actually is actually a pretty good thing. I do like the, you know, within the app, if I come here into the settings and I go to the editor, now you can scroll through and you can set up what you want your defaults to be 
for the application and, and a lot of the different elements within the application itself. So this is a good one. And then you also have the what they're calling MindMap 2.0, uh, MindMap optimizations, where they support the FreeMind extension and also the OPML file extensions where you can easily import those in and utilize those. And then lastly, they have, they're providing some templates here to boost your productivity. So you can go to their website and import uh, some of the predefined templates onto your, your boards here and leverage these templates here uh, within the application. So some nice updates here for the application. They also have some videos here on the web page. Again, there will be a link to this page in the description. And yeah, let's move on to the next application here. So the next one is Heptabase. We're now at the time of this writing, we're at uh, 1.39.1 for the, uh, the web app and then also 1.18.1 for the mobile application. Um, not too many big features that have been released here or changes uh, to the application itself. Uh, you do get right now when you collapse your cards on the on the boards, you can now see the full title where before it would get cut off if it was uh, too long. That's available. They offer now a referral link. So when you go into the app, if we go ahead and open it up here and we go down to the bottom, we have earn rewards. You click on that earn rewards and then you can invite people using your a link that they give you here. And when you give people this link, if they subscribe and they go through the trial and they get a paid subscription, then you will get rewards and they will get rewards. So check that out. And then we also, they've added in here a floating menu for text elements is the next one. So nothing really major um, with the updates that came with Heptabase, but um, some pretty nice uh, quality of life type features that they've added in there. Next up, we have Scruntle and Scruntle we have, uh, we're at version uh, zero dot 22.938 at the time of this recording and what they've done in the you know the updates leading up to this here is they're starting to set the stage for their playground for the mind I think it's called where it's supposed to be a pretty big release something that's going to be noticeable that enhances the user experience and provides some additional capabilities that Hopefully that everyone has been waiting for who's leveraging Sprintle. And right now what they've done is first off, they've gone in and they've changed some of the terminology where they're, instead of calling things cards, they're now calling them docs and the archive is now the library. Um, some of their documents somewhat counter to this because I've seen recent updates that still say cards um, instead of documents. but um, eventually I think everything is going to change over to docs. Now they've updated the doc colors. If we go into the application here, let's go into the settings for Scrintle just to show you and you can somewhat get um, a sense of some of the co colors here. They're, they're much more uh, poppy and, and bright and noticeable. So you can get a, if you go to the release page, I'll have a link in the description. See some of the colors that they're going to um, going to offer up for your your documents or your cards that will be on your boards. So the, it's starting to make it a little bit prettier, and they're cleaning up the UI is what they're doing here. So if we go to some of the other updates, they've moved the tasks uh, that used to be in the left hand pane to the settings and they've also removed the right sidebar. So if we kind of take a look at that there, if we go to, let's go to my desk again, where before there used to be a right hand pane that uh, went from top to bottom, they now have this little hovering uh, button here that gives you the same functionality, but you can kind of open and close this and it's always here and available to you. So. 
not too big of a change uh, but it takes up a lot less space than before uh, when when you had the entire right hand pane and then they've also moved some things to this other little button here for starring sharing you can copy a link to your board and you can also delete and then if we go into the settings which they've moved that around as well too so if you kind of look at the board overall is is different we have certain elements where i can collapse the uh, side pane here on the left here at the top here now and you got the arrows at the top they've also moved some of the settings over here in this um, in this right top side here where you can see your status like you used to before but now you get this drop down where you can change your your thing for the application change that there we can come in here and we can go to the settings from there if we come in here and change that back to light mode um, we can go into settings here and in the settings we have the tasks that have been moved here so if we come in here and we go into the task experimental section if you have any open tasks you can come in here and you can see those or if you want to click on the included uh, include the completed ones you can see those right here now so they've somewhat hidden it away to where they can uh, work on this particular feature because it's I guess it's not up to uh, the standards they want to have going forward so they will come back to this but at least they kept it around they didn't get rid of it so people who still use this particular feature um, they can st still have access to it even though it's just a little bit more hidden than it used to be the next one up is Nodi. this is not really a, there hasn't been an update to talk about here but we did get a notice from Alex who is the founder for this application who put in the discord that there will be an update coming next week on Monday so we sh should see this update 1.7.0 next week which brings some new features and also improves the performance of the application so looking forward to see what what comes out of this particular update and next week I will probably post something um, my feedback after getting access to the update and doing some testing and playing around with the updated version of the uh, Nodi app so we're at the end of the list of applications that I want to talk about for the updates. If you like this format, this is the first time I'm actually um, talking about the different updates for different applications all in one video. If you like this format, then let me know in the comments and I'll probably try to keep this up maybe um, bi-weekly or something like that there, do a video of the updates from that have been done um, from the previous video of updates that I've done so if you like the format leave some comments I'll probably try to keep this up and then I'm also going to uh, leave the links and other information down in the comments and on my Substack page and the Substack page I've set up a while ago but I haven't been able to, to actually keep it up to date so hopefully this will help me start keeping that the Substack site up to date with certain content and yeah I look I look forward to trying to um, provide additional value and information about some of these apps some of my processes how I use these applications to be more productive but that is it for this video if you like the content don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and until the next time have a nice day